Well, uh, good afternoon, friends. So, in earlier class, we have completed the first unit, that is, introduction to advanced materials, then followed by the ferrous and non-ferrous alloys, then composites, then nanocomposites, and the last unit is uh, the polymers and the types of polymers. So, what are the basic requirements and what are the basic needs of the polymers? So, as in the syllabus, you can see the polymers <coughs> is mentioned. So polymers are the materials which are basically used for a substitute material where the strength is not that required but whereas other properties like light weight, low density okay, and uh, <coughs> required factor of safety wherever it is required there it is going to uh, the best suited material compared to the ferrous as well as non-ferrous materials. Okay. So here, when we talk of these polymers, polymers in the present day, so like uh, if you can compare like 5000 years ago, so their general material was the stone. So <coughs> stone was used as a weapon for all the cases. Then gradu gradually this uh, stone age has been converted to iron age. So where people started using iron as a substitute material for domestic as well as the commercial material. So this iron age existed for a longer duration. So gradually the disadvantage of this iron is uh, it used to rust over a period of time. At the same time, <coughs> the weight is the bulky. Okay. So corrosion is one issue and the weight is other issue. Then it gave rise to the, the non-ferrous material, particularly copper and nickel, and uh, which uh, stimulated to the brass and bronze. So earlier, uh, like after the Iron Age, so next came the Bronze Age, where the bronze material as well as brass material generally used as a substitute to the iron. But as the journey continued of the brass, but it cannot replace completely the Iron Age. So as the time progresses, then it came to the Aluminium Age. So aluminium is basically low, uh, low weight as well as the corrosion resistance. But the problem with the aluminum is the strength is the criteria. So the strength was less. So in order to overcome this, they have done a lot of research into the aluminum to increase or the substantiate the strength of this uh, aluminum. So <clears throat> around uh, 70 years or near about 100 years, majority of the shift has been occurred from iron to aluminum and the brass or bronze to aluminum. So still people were not happy with the aluminum, though there are nine series of uh, uh, aluminum have been found out, but still people were not happy with the aluminum because of many intrinsic properties. So gradually they started looking for other alternate material. So one among other alternate material came rise, that is the polymers. So polymers, uh, the basic problem with the polymer is the utility and the strength is very less. So the utility means, so it is used earlier when it was found, it was used only for the domestic applications as well as this household applications. But gradually over a period of time, so it started entering into many various types of fields including packaging to the household. So even the water bottles and the pet bottles and the jar bottles in our houses that is in domestic applications wherever you see, there these polymers, polymer bottles have thought of alternate compared to these uh, ceramics as well as this uh, regular the, uh, steel and the brass containers. So this is how the polymer journey began. But the strength of polymer was less. So again to increase the strength of uh, this uh, polymer, many researchers have come, <coughs> come down and uh, they have increased or substantiated uh, increased uh, the strength of the polymer and uh, the utility part with the earlier temperature was hardly 50 to 60 degrees beyond 60 degrees if you use the bottle or the plastic so generally it becomes soft and it used to melt so nowadays you can use up to 120 150 degrees very comfortably and normally so people or uh, the researchers have developed these type of polymers for high temperature application and also they have started using these uh, <coughs> high uh, strength polymers. So nowadays all these electronic gadgets, okay, so majority of the components which were earlier made up of the metals, now they are getting shifted to the polymer based material. 
So the reason is they are very lightweight, corrosion resistant and also no wear and tear. So this is how polymers in our day to day life, it has occupied the space from bucket to rocket. So nowadays polymer has entered almost in entire uh, regions, uh, like there is no field where it is polymer can be excluded, either it is mechanical, electric, electrical, electronics, computers, in every aspect of even the textiles, food, okay, <clears throat> in all parts of the engineering applications, polymer has entered. So now the researchers, the only, uh, what researchers are looking is, to one, there are two aspects of the polymers, one is the advantages, other one is the disadvantages. So when we talk of disadvantages, it is majority of the polymers are non-recyclable. So which is creating a another segment called as environmental pollution because of these polymers. But still there are very good aspects of these polymers where you can increase the strength and use it for all the types of applications and we can one at one point of time we can completely exclude these metals. <clears throat> so the, 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 that is how the polymer has made a space in the uh, market okay so now when we talk of polymers there are two types of polymers one is thermosetting polymer and the thermoplast polymer so these uh, thermoplast polymers are the material where it cannot be recycled again and again or it cannot be used again and again it is only one time process whereas this uh, thermoplast material are the materials where you can recycle a number of times, provided you keep on adding some fresh material, but the recyclability part or the regaining part from the previous method or the previous process is little bit reduced. Means that we are going to compromise little bit in terms of quality, but however, the <coughs> pollution rate by these thermoplasts compared to thermosets is very less or limited. So this is how these thermo plast polymers are becoming more and more popular because of the recyclability. Okay, so many researchers have done a lot of work on these uh, polymers that in particular thermoplast material. Now if you want to understand this uh, polymer, what is this polymer? So generally when we studied this uh, first unit, so we have seen different types of engineering material where this uh, engineering materials are classified into the <coughs> metals again in metals uh, like um, uh, ferrous and non-ferrous. Next comes the elastomers. So elastomer further it is classified into uh, this uh, plastics and uh, the rubbers. So further is composite material, ceramics, so uh, non-engineering materials like this it has been classified. So when we talk of these uh, polymers, okay, so again these polymers are two types that is elastomers and the <coughs> rubbers. Okay, so this uh, polymer is a type of a material. So here poly means many, mer means a molecule. So this mer is nothing but a Latin word. Okay, so which generally means molecule, a single molecule. Where these single molecules are brought together in a order, particular order, then it is called as polymers. So many mers are coming together and forming a link in between these mers. So this process is called as polymer. So these are organic in nature. Some polymers are inorganic nature. So majority of the polymers are generated from the organic system. So polymers are the large organic molecules comprised of repeating units that is monomers. That, that's what just uh, what we are saying that are covalently bonded together. Okay. So polymers can be naturally occurring. So there are two types, so natural and synthetic. Okay, so here we are talking of the naturally occurring. So polystrides and proteins are synthesized in a laboratory. Okay, so natural and artificial. So polymerization is the process which combines this many monomers or many mers. So the process where this individual mer or individual monomer is connected is called as polymerization okay so this is called as polymers so polymers prepared by polymerization of a single monomer is called as homo polymer <coughs> so again 
Further, it is uh, classified into homopolymer or the copolymer or the bio uh, polymers. So, numerous consumer products are made from synthetic polymers. So, now we can see. So, entire the all this entire cycle is made up of the polymer except these spokes. Rest others are the <coughs> polymers only. And the weight of this is hardly around 1.2 kgs. So here the polymers are classified into just know what we have seen that is the chain growth or the step growth which is called as the addition or condensation process. So the polymers are generated by two process that is the condensation process and addition process. So chain growth are prepared that is the addition growth that what we have seen in the nano composites where the growth of the individual particles. So monomers are added to the growing end of the polymer chain the conversion of the vinyl chloride to polyvinyl. So this is a polyvinyl chloride. So this is one is this is a chloride molecule the repetitive of this chloride molecule so which is called as the poly so means many chloride molecules. So generally this, uh, uh, this PVC material uh, we see it as pipes. So in uh, domestic applications uh, in houses in everybody's houses we see these pipelines generally this uh, PVC pipeline. So that is one of the best example where this uh, vinyl chloride by the process this is a single mer by the process called as polymerization this chloride is repeated in <coughs> order that is why it is called as polymer or polyvinyl chloride. So with the chloride molecule that is vinyl chloride molecule is repetitive in nature. So if it is repetitive in a single line okay so then it is called as homopolymer. So there are no cross linking here and these are generally crystalline in nature that is you can't have the crystallinity as compared to the metals but there is some semi crystallinity is maintained in these polymers. So these are general introduction about the polymers. So this is what I was speaking about the linear polyethylene. Ethylene is a uh, type of material where polyethylene means many. So you can see there is no cross linking all the monomers. So each one is mer that is monomer and the repetitive order of this uh, monomers is done with the help of the polymerization process and you can see the arrangements are linear. So this type of uh, molecules is called as the monomer and here this is cross linking okay cross linking or uh, branches where you can see here this there are no branches. So this is this, this leads to the better properties compared to this but however the crystalline, uh, crystallinity will be reduced but the strength will be better. Okay, so now you can see here the paints. So we see uh, many paints, so synthetic paints or the uh, <coughs> rubber coated paints. Okay, so which he is made up of vinyl acetate. So when you apply the uh, this this type of paint on any surface, maybe the wall or a, uh, the benches or on the surface, whenever there is a crack, you can see so many cracks on the building. If the building is painted by this uh, uh, type of paint, that is rubber paint, so when there is a crack, the crack is not seen, and the material that the coating, which is made up of the rubber, it gets expanded. So as a result of that, though there are cracks beside the surface, so which will be not seen, okay. So it covers, so and the appearance will be very good. Now you can see this uh, <coughs> polyisobutylene, so all these uh, balls, maybe the basketball or the rugby ball or this uh, lawn tennis balls, okay. 
so when we hit the lawn tennis ball so lot of impact is going to get on the surface and when it impacts so that impact is absorbed and the ball carries forward again there that impact will be <coughs> dropped on the surface again further it jumps so that uh, if the ball is not having that uh, absorbing and releasing of the forces so then it will not uh, jump okay so it will just settle down like a metals so that the jumping of that material is obtained by these polymers now we take two balls which are made up of the plastic and the rubber or the plastic and the metal balls so just if you drop both the balls so one will rebound so other one will not rebound so these polymer <coughs> balls okay which absorbs and it impacts back whereas the metals which just releases the energy from the surface so because of that it can't bounce back <coughs> similarly if you compare the plastic and the rubber balls the rubber bouncing is much more compared to the plastic because the nature of energy what it is being it is concentrated at the contact surface and immediately it releases and bounces back so that is what the difference between the plastics that is elastomers and the uh, polymers okay so nowadays we can see this uh, uh, applications of polymer into many segments so if you can see this uh, pen okay which is a super glue which is made up of a synthetic material just earlier maybe the fevicol or a gum what we generally used to use in our childhood days so we need to apply the gum and uh, hold it for a longer time and we need to allow <coughs> certain amount of time maybe 4 hours 6 hours 12 hours sometimes even 24 hours to settle down so nowadays these glues have come such that if you apply so within 2 uh, to 5 seconds it settles down so means the repair and maintenance is becoming more and more popular by using these super glues and these are made up of the methyl alpha cyano acrylate okay so these all are the polymers only and uh, even these the acrylic fibers okay these are basically light in weight and this can completely protect from the sunlight heat as well as the <coughs> wind so now you can imagine these soldiers which are there on the border and uh, if they are in the siachen or in the kashmir region sometimes the temperature goes up to minus 20 50 degrees it will be very common there so we cannot use our regular clothes there okay so there the you need to look at the safety of the soldiers then what type of cloth should the soldier should wear okay wear <coughs> to get protected from that such a <coughs> uh, negative temperature environment so there these orion and acrylic fibers are basically used such that the protective material for the the uh, for the soldiers okay so these polymers are the material where which it can withstand from negative to positive temperature so negative 50 is to almost like uh, uh, plus 100 degrees it can withstand so the operating range of these uh, polymers are from negative to positive suppose if you want to operate these uh, metals in case of the negative temperature okay so in negative temperature the withstanding ability of the metals at the uh, minus 50 degrees is very very difficult so immediately it uh, cracks sometimes even it cracks like a brittle material though generally we believe that metals are the <coughs> crystalline and they are very soft and ductile material but when we uh, when it comes to the negative temperature like minus 50 minus 70 minus 100 degrees they cannot sustain and they simply break like a brittle fever but at the room temperature they behave best and it you can pull it like a rubber okay so that is how a change in the material properties are there in case of metals whereas <coughs> in polymers that change is negligible okay so it can operate both <coughs> positive as well as negative temperatures so these are copolymers so you can see the copolymers is nothing but the 
two different materials are arranged in repetitive in nature one after other and uh, this is the random arrangement you don't have any arrangement sequence at all so each mer or each monomer can be accommodated anywhere within the system or anywhere within the <coughs> material so this type of arrangement of monomer is called as the random <coughs> uh, copolymer so you don't get the desired properties or the repetitive properties of the same material if you are going to use the 10 different components of the same material and if they are arranged in random copolymer in all the 10 samples you don't get the <coughs> same properties though they are made up of the same combination of uh, uh, med, uh, polymers and the chemical composition is same because the only reason is the arrangement is random so all the 10 samples will be behaving differently okay so that behavior is not like a 1 to 20 it is in the range of 18 to 20 but whereas in this alternating copolymer you can anticipate the properties just by looking at the arrangement of the molecules so if these are made up of the continuous single monomers again the properties will be different so looking at the arrangement of molecules it is classified as homopolymer and copolymer again in copolymer it is classified as <coughs> the alternating copolymer and the random copolymer so as the name suggests alternating polymer copolymer is something but each monomer are arranged in one after other one after other one after other in a particular sequence whereas in random so there is no sequence okay so it is all the molecules are dispersed or accommodating random positions okay so that is what it is called as random copolymer okay so this uh, growth of this polymerization process depends on two things that is the epoxy as well as the ionization so this uh, we can see some of the polymers called as epoxy resins where they are completely transparent like the glass so when we talk the glass the first things come to our mind is the brittleness as well as the transparent properties so similarly when we talk in terms of epoxies so we can get any color of the epoxies okay and we can get the transparency in the epoxy resin so that is what the advantage and that is how <coughs> it is generated here so these are the different types of uh, polymerization process includes polyamides polyesters polyurethanes polycarbonates and epoxy resins these are step growth polymers so generally nylons uh, these are the nylons are generally called as polymides which is also called as pa6 now as i was telling you about the crystallinity now assume that the entire is of the polymer material here it is crystalline you can see the arrangement of monomer is in a <coughs> straight line so where there is a repetitive in nature if you can see here okay there is no order if you can see here again it is uh, crystalline so here it is non crystalline so entire material you cannot have the crystalline material as in case of the metals so and you can't have the complete non crystallinity as in case of the ceramics whereas this uh, polymer comes in between the ceramic arrangement as well as this uh, metallic arrangement so this is called as the semi crystalline in nature so these are not 
<coughs> random oriented as in case of the ceramics and these are not sequentially arranged in case of the metals. So the arrangement is in between the ceramics and uh, metals hence it is called as the semi-crystalline materials. So in polymer there are two things which are important that is the glass transition temperature and the melted transition temperature. So this glass transition temperature decides majority of the factors or the majority of the properties of a polymer. So this glass transition temperature is which the hard amorphous material become soft. Means when you take the polymer and start heating, so it tries to absorb some quantity of heat without changing its properties or without changing its dimensions or without changing its shape and size. The moment it becomes soft, okay, or the, the moment it tries to change its property like from hard to soft, okay, so then the property will start deteriorating or there is change in the molecule orientation or the moment of the orientation. So as a result of that, <clears throat> the property of a polymer starts changing. So this is called as glass transition temperature. So whereas this melt transition temperature is which the term polymer <coughs> is starts converting from solid to, to liquid. So that the boiling point or the melting point is the melt transition temperature. So that is what uh, we have discussed uh, just earlier, there are two types of polymer, that is the thermoplast polymer and the thermoset polymers. So these thermoplast polymers can be remelted and molded into shapes that retain uh, the polymer if the polymer is cooled. Okay, So you can reheat it <coughs> a number of times and you can cool it a number of times. The properties are not going to change, even though if they are going to change, it is going to... <coughs> the order is very small and it is very small in nature. Whereas this thermosetting are very complex network. Okay, just now I was telling you about the cross-linking. So in cross-linking you cannot retrieve back. Whereas in the copolymer or the whole poly, um, homopolymer, the retrievation rate, <coughs> the retrievation rate is very high. So these are cross-link polymers. So because of this these be, behave like a more insulative in nature. So that is why all these electrical appliances switch, okay, are made up of all these buttons, fan regulators, okay, electric uh, connectors, uh, tops, all uh, made up of the backlight. Nowadays, the <coughs> it is made up of polymers. Earlier, it was made up of the backlight material. So this is how just now we have seen there are uh, types of polymers that is the thermoplast, thermosetting and elastomers. <coughs> these elastomers generally called as rubbers. Okay. So all these uh, the erasers, okay, the tires, okay, all these are the examples of the elastomers that is rubbers. And uh, these two are thermosetting polymers and the thermoplast polymers are the type of the plastics. So <clears throat> these are the solid materials at room temperature, but viscous uh, liquids when it is heated to a temperature only few hundred degrees. So this uh, not even earlier it was the 80 to 90 degrees was the melting temperature. Nowadays the polymers are coming with 150 as in nominal. If you take PVC it is 130 uh, uh, PP 140 degrees. So nowadays with uh, <clears throat> 
uh, addition of some polymer polymer composite so the melting point is going up to 250 300 degree centigrade so even if you are going to use this aluminum and copper they also try to change their shape physically they are in solid but the because of this coefficient of thermal expansion they don't retain the shape and size so the utility of aluminum is 250 to 300 degrees but these can withstand up to that temperature so <clears throat> by combination of some ceramics into this polymers we can use this polymers up to the usage of the aluminum material whereas the weight is also less and the <clears throat> density is also low but the application wise this almost is equivalent to that of the aluminum material so that is what the advantage of using polymers <clears throat> when compared to the metals so the characteristics allows them to see uh, easily shape and size so they can be subjected to heating and cooling cycles repeatedly without significant degradation so this is represented by the tp so tp is nothing but thermoplast polymers okay so next is thermosetting polymers so thermosetting polymers when we are going to generate this raw material from the formaldehyde process so these are cross linked so first time when we are going to heat so it is <coughs> soft in nature and after, once the shape is given for the first time in a dye or a mold by creating the required cavity after it is cooling it becomes hard so once it becomes hard suppose if you reheat so it is not going to change its shape and size only it will become like a sponge or like a spongy material so the cross linking is so strong it does not release it so bonding is too strong so <clears throat> if reheated thermoset degrade their characteristics then soften so these are represented by the ts so tp means thermoplast ts means thermoset polymers and the next is the elastomers or rubbers so these are very flexible in nature and uh, these are basically used where for the elastic region so as we have studied in earlier cases that is the the elastic region as well as the plastic region so plastic region is which when the load is applied the any material will deform when the load is released it cannot come back to the original shape and size <clears throat> whereas the metal if you're going to use under certain limited stresses or the limited loads it works in the elastic region beyond that load it enters into the plastic region even after releasing the load it cannot come back to the original shape and size <clears throat> whereas these are the material up until its last limit okay up to 70 to 80 percent these are basically elastomer so these are expand and once the load is released it can come back to the original shape and size whereas if you take these metals it can expand hardly to 15 to 20 percent whereas this can expand up to 70 to 80 80 or sometimes even 90 percent so these are <clears throat> wherever the flexibility is required wherever the coating of the mo movement is required there these rubbers are the best suitable applications so even in the present market so majority <coughs> uh, of the polymers are it, the share is 70 percent so all these are synthetic uh, polymers and uh, thermosites and elastomers share the 30 percent so these are the applications these are only limited and they do particularly the <coughs> electronic industry and uh, some electrical industry whereas this uh, 70 percent includes all the domestic to engineering applications so that is why this uh, thermos uh, <coughs> thermoplast materials are more widely used so these are some of the examples so which are the thermoset plastics and thermoplast materials and elastomers so thermoplastics are the polyvinyl chloride polyethylene <coughs> polypropylene polystyrene nylon all these are thermoplast <coughs> materials 
Next is thermoset polymers uh, are the phenolics, epoxies, okay, <coughs> bakelite, uh, polyesters. All these are the thermosets. Elastomers is the natural rubber, vulcanized. Uh, what we get from the tree, direct extract. That one and synthetic rubbers. Okay, so all these are the elastomers. <coughs> so why why we require the polymers okay so is it is there any other alternate material for these polymers so as of now there is no alternate material for these polymers so here <coughs> the processing is very very easy the cost of manufacturing is easy and uh, no skilled uh, labor is much skilled labor is required ready semi skilled is okay <coughs> And the cost of investment on the entire machinery or on the entire process is very, very less. So whereas if you take the ferrous and non-ferrous metal where the cost of extraction and the processing and the <coughs> machinery is involved in, in converting from raw material to the final finished or semi-finished product, it is more expensive. So here with the less, less investment where you can convert the raw material to the semi-finished or semi-finished product. So here the cost of investment is very less and <clears throat> it is the shape and size is, uh, to get the required shape and size is very easy and the uh, labor involved is, that manpower hours involved is very less compared to the uh, <clears throat> ferrous and non-ferrous materials and uh, very uh, <clears throat> Machinery is involved into this, there's a lot of the high-end machineries or the high sophisticated technology is involved into it. Okay. <clears throat> so, these required and the energy what it is required compared to metals and these polymers is very less compared to the metals. So, these are the advantages in nature and uh, here the basic one more property here is the transparency. Where in metal you can't get the transparency and all are the crystalline in nature and uh, these <coughs> you can get the transparency using these polymers but in metals and ceramics you can't get any transparency so these are some of the general properties of the polymers that is low density uh, compared to metals and ceramic so the maximum density of this is 1.8 <coughs> gram per centimeter Cube. And uh, the, it is having the good strength to weight ratio compared to the <coughs> ceramics and the metals. Okay. So this is high corrosion resistance, low electrical conductivity and low thermal conductivity. But nowadays a lot of research has been made. So the low electrical conductivity and the low thermal conductivity can be made as good thermal conductor as well as good electrical conductor. So this is <coughs> how the insulating material of electrical and thermal nowadays this is converted into the disadvantage of this has been converted to advantage by adding some <coughs> metal particles or the conductive particles in the polymers and made it as the good thermal conductor as well as the uh, electrical conductors. And uh, the drawback or the limitations of uh, this uh, <coughs> polymers are the low strength okay so the strength wise these are not stronger as compared to the ceramics in the compressive and the tensile in the metals <coughs> and uh, the low modulus of elasticity so the stiffness of this is very less compared to the metals and uh, service temperature <coughs> The maximum service temperature is um, uh, 200 to 250 degrees maximum or the general service operation is <coughs> 90 to 100 degrees. Uh, so here the viscoelastic properties which can be distinct limitation in a load bearing application. Suppose if I want to use the <coughs> bearing. So when I want to use this polymers as a bearing, so this cannot withstand like uh, <coughs> metals. So generally the brass is considered to be a, brass means the babit material is considered to be best uh, material for sharing the, <coughs> reducing the friction and it can absorb the wood load that is dampen and uh, the friction is also less 
and it can also transmit the very high power. So this cannot transmit the high power, but definitely it is can transmit low power with high speed <coughs> and with a uh, low weight. Okay. So some polymers degrade when subjected to sunlight and other forms of radiation. Suppose if we keep these polymers in an open atmosphere over a period of time, the property deteriorates and they become brittle and just by a small application of the load, they break. <coughs> but they are not uh, biodegradable. So synthesis of polymer. So synthesis of polymer, so I'm going to stop here because <coughs> if I stop here, if I continue here, it will be half in the coming class. So hence I'm going to stop here. So if you have any difficulty in understanding the basic introduction of these polymers and the types of polymers, so you are free to ask any queries. Okay, thank you.